Good day, this is Jim Patel from Columbia Gorge Community College, Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is E2122 Digital 2. Today, as promised, we're going to talk about the serial in, serial out shift registers. So keep in mind, again, what is a serial in, serial out shift register? Well, going back to our bus example, that's where data comes in one entrance door. It's moved left or right and goes out one exit door. And if it rotates, it comes back in the entry door. So let's consider this arrangement of four D flip-flops. So these are all Ds, Qs, not Dairy Queens. And they're flip-flops, and let's say they're positive edge triggered. Now what happens here, we're going to go ahead, give everybody the same clock. So where is the indoor? This guy right there. Where is the outdoor? That guy right there. And now, the previous stage's Q is the next stage's D. Previous stage's Q is the next stage's D. Previous stage's Q, next stage's D. OK? What does this mean? Let's use our friend the timing diagram to look at this. OK, so positive edge. And let's say um, our D input right here. D input, it's going to look like, let's say we want to store 1, 0, 1, 1, just for the heck of it. 1, 0, 1, 1. So it's one, zero, one, one. And I'm going to stop right there for the analysis of the D input right there. We'll come back to what goes on beyond there. OK, so let's do each individual stage here. Let me uh, move this guy out of the way here. So this is, let's call stage zero. I'm going to use a different color. Stage zero, stage one, stage two, stage three. So Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. Everybody is initially reset. They're initially at zero. So positive edge, first positive edge comes along right there. OK, so what happens to Q0, stage 0? What's that? Well, it becomes a 1. And it's going to stay a 1 till the next positive edge comes along. We're strictly dealing with stage 0 right now. And it goes down to zero. Next positive edge comes along. Whoops. Becomes a one again. Next positive edge. It becomes a one. It stays that way to the next positive edge. OK, so now, from the perspective of stage one, what is going down here? OK, it's still receiving the positive edge of the same clock. So it should react accordingly here. Same thing with Q2 and Q3. So from the perspective of Q1, what's on its input at the second clock pulse? What's on its input at the second clock pulse is this guy right here, is Q0. So it was reset. There was, no, there was nothing on it before. Basically, it's going to go up here. 
Okay, this may help out too if you do this. Basically, your account for the delays. It's a slight delay here. I'm going to redraw Q0. Oh, destroyed that. So now what I've done there is add a little bit of added a little bit of delay to the Q0 signal to account for the fact that it's entering that single device at stage zero. So now it's a little bit easier to see what's going on with Q1. So Q1 is going to read zero at this clock pulse. And it's going to read one at that clock pulse. But there's a little bit of a delay. It's reading one there. Now it's reading a zero. Now it's reading a one. OK. Stage two. What's it reading at this clock pulse? Well, it's the previous stage's output. A zero, a zero. And then it's a 1 right there. And then it's a 0. Right there. And for the next stage, again, it's a 0. A zero, a zero, and finally a one. So what have you stored right here? One, zero, one, one. Which if I remember right, that's exactly what we wanted to store. One, zero, one, one. Okay, that's MSB to LSB. But now, which way is it coming out of the serial register? So which way is it going in first off? It went in 1011. So that's MSB to LSB. And it's still coming out. MSB to LSB, 1011. And you can feed these in either way, too. You can feed them in LSB to MSB or MSB to LSB. It doesn't matter. As long as you recognize that if you put the LSB in first, the LSB is coming out first. If you put the MSB in first, the MSB is coming out first. Okay? So let's go ahead and pull this data out now. We're going to pull the data out and we're going to simultaneously clear this guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to make whoops, our D input green, to our main green, zero. And what you're going to do is in effect put all zeros on stage zero, one, two, and three. And at the same time you're going to extract the data from MSB to LSB. Okay? I'm going to draw an extra clock pulse here because we're going to need it. And there's our positive edges. Okay, so next positive edge comes along Q0. It's reading a 0. This one stays at 1. This one goes to one. This one goes to zero. So notice the pattern that's forming here. Just look at this little block right here. Notice the transition from there to there, there to there, there to there in the timing diagram. You're shifting things through this register, hence the name 
shift register. And if you think about it, what's going to happen with this block looking thing? It's that block. It's that block. You're shifting things in the timing diagram. So if we've done everything correctly, what we should see here is this guy right there. And we'll see if that works. So again, Q0 is still reading a 0. OK, so we've done it correctly. It's basically it's shifting that through our register. Again, this guy is a 0. That's a 0. So now it seems almost like we're shifting a 0 in. And finally, after that fourth clock pulse, we've, in effect, cleared our register. So how many clock pulses did it take to get a 4-bit number, 1011, into it? It took 1, 2, 3, 4. How many clock pulses did it take to clear the register and get it out of there? 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've demonstrated a pattern here. The number of bits you want to put in a serial register, is the number of clock pulses that it takes. The number of bits out, that's the number of clock pulses it takes to get it. Four bits in, takes four clock pulses. Eight bits out, takes eight bits, uh, excuse me, eight clock bits, clock pulses out. So um, another way you can rapidly clear everything, let's just say you've made a total mistake and you want to clear everything, just do an, put an asynchronous clearing input on every single one of these guys. And that's regardless, one active low pulse on that guy clears everybody out simultaneously. And oftentimes the register has a has that exactly that, a clearing function prior to data coming in. Make sure that there's no extraneous data already in there for fear that you may pull something out. Okay? So you give it an active low clear, then you start giving it the D in signal. Okay? So um, what more to say about this guy? Well, um, the logic symbol for these guys, in this particular case, SR, shift register, 4. Data in, clock, data out. Um, how the bonus round, bonus question. How would you do this with JK flip-flops? And that's why I had this thing up here before. Well, D flip-flops, again, only have one input. And you just want to store, when it's a 1, it stores a 1. When it's a 0, it stores a 0. So JK flip-flops have three functionalities. It's got that set, reset, and toggle. So what you want to do is you want to avoid the toggle, OK? So all you really have to do is this guy gets the data in, and you avoid the toggle by inverting it and giving it to the K. And the same thing occurs between each stage. Basically, what's happening is you're never allowing it to go into a toggle mode. You're either clearly setting or clearly resetting that individual JK flip-flop. And by the way, every single one of these guys has the same clock. OK? So serial in, serial out, shift register. It came in through one door, D in. And it's coming out through one door, Q. OK? So reading that data out, you've read, where is our reading? You read a 1, a 0, a 1, 1. OK? 
Um, not much more to say about these guys. Let's go to serial and parallel out registers.